Previously on Silo, Season 1, Episode 8. Julia jumped off the staircase, but I'm pretty sure she's going to be okay. And we found out that Bernard is the big bad evil of the entire Silo. What did you think about today's episode, Silo Season 1, Episode 9? Episode 9, I give it a 4 out of 10. I am struggling with this show. We're still waiting on the tunnel outside. The water down deep, the drill, the hard drive. We see one little file on it, but there's more. I want to know more. Still all these things we're waiting on. Uh, not much happened in this episode, and we didn't really learn much. So in that case, in that sense, it's kind of a snooze. Uh, how many people know about the outside being lush and green? We don't really know. I mean, nobody suspects that there's some weirdness going on. I don't know. And then farming, plumbing, recycling, sanitation, mechanical. They're still being ignored. These are important aspects of the silo and survivability. We didn't learn anything again. So for me, overall, 4 out of 10. What do you think of episode 9? I also gave it a 4 out of 10. It feels like the world is just too open. Like like I, like I the silo is a, is a silo. It's a tube. There should be a fixed number of characters. And now while there's 10,000 people, it feels like any time there needs to, there's a problem, we just pull up a new character. Bam, here you get a red-handed IT guy that can solve all your problems. It feels like just characters on demand. It's, it feels... There's no, there's no drama to it. Um, additionally, the no, it's no surprise that the outside is nice. Uh, as audience, we knew the outside was nice for a long time. Um, the mystery now for me is why would Bernard want people not want people to know about it? Why would he want people to not know about it? Um, I speculate maybe he he's like doing actual calculation, like if if forty percent of the silos is like, oh, it's out great outside, let's go live outside. Could the 60% of people remaining in the silo be enough people to maintain the machinery, to maintain the, the living conditions of the silo? So it's possible that there's like a very legitimate reason for Bernard not to want people to go outside. Um, or he could just be evil. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see where, where the show takes us. For now, let's go into our review of Silo Season 1, Episode 9. Let's do it. So this is from the beginning of the episode. Uh, we're noticing these, we got a better view of these big fans that mm. somehow circulate air throughout the silo at the very bottom of the silo. Fanny boys. And we got these Mario tubes, mm. other tubes. It really bothered me that it was so dirty and That's moist. Right. I see puddles perhaps. That's right. And we, we talked about um, these like lamps here. There's this oil with this, like dirt sticking on it. So you have this critical air infrastructure with moving parts and spinning parts with just dirt and grime and maybe even mold and gross growths all over the place. How sustainable is this? I, I feel like the only time I've seen mechanical stuff be really dirty, grimy stuff like this is like the bottom of your car where like regular people aren't doing maintenance. Anytime I've been in a laboratory, like keep that shit dialed in, keep it clean. Um, why? Because like, I don't know what materials this is, but say it has any type, any bit of iron in it, say it's a little bit ferrous. Well, now you have a layer of dirt separating the, the metal from air, which would then evaporate uh, any moisture. Instead, you get dirt trapping the moisture. So then now you have iron plus moisture. This thing's going to rot. This thing's going to, to oxidize. It's going to rust. And so that's a problem because it's like the mecha the mechanisms of distributing air throughout the silo is, is right here. And so mechanical, these people are diligent. These people are thoughtful. They're like keeping this shit running. They would clean this up. This would be spick and span. Second level. So now you have this like dirt, you have this grime, but this is moisture. This is a breeding zone for bacteria and various fungus. Now, now say you have something, a fungus that spores, it sporulates. And now that sporulates right over these fans, that spore is being shot up into the silo. This is actually a health hazard. And I think mechanical, the like the very thoughtful, very careful people, they would have this dialed in. This would be clean. And if it's not clean, they should, you know, make sure the mayor or the sheriff's office or judicial knows about it, that it's a serious problem, and they should get the resources diverted down here, because this is unacceptable. 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 Additionally, I just okay. I've seen this now. These are these are fans, right? And so they push air either up or down, uh, depending on which way these blades are tilted. But either way, there there's this this mesh, this mesh, this grid that protects things from falling in. But it only protects things from falling in if they're bigger than the holes. And so, like, say someone is like at the top of the silo, like dropping a pen, like drop a pen, it goes down in there. And now you got a pen inside these rotating blades. Like that's mechanically a terrible idea. Why don't they just cover this? Cover it up, not seal it tight, but just 
put a little like umbrella on top of it or even like like a like a mm-hmm. trash can lid so the air can go out the side that would protect the top so so man mechanical is not getting resources supplied to them uh, from from the optops uh, now that you're saying this actually why are these fans even on the surface shouldn't they be down in the in a more convenient location underneath so if something does come in it doesn't damage these it's protected down Heck, somewhere even in. even do the piping right so that they come up on the wall where this lamp is. Can we like little little circle? Yeah, yeah, one. sure. Yeah, any of these make the make the fans come up sideways. There the air go. will yeah. still distribute, but you then you've taken the risk of things falling into it down to near zero. Near zero. That's right. And plus, it now it's horizontal, so somebody can work on it standing. That's right. If they need to maintain it, whereas here, you have this central piece, you know, like now stepping on blades, and they're like, Ksh! so now you have to be hanging, Ooh. and like. How do you maintain this? Hey, yeah, so, how do you get in there when there's when the pack says no pulleys? You can't like float above it, right? You just gotta lean over the edge. So, now it's impossible to maintain. So a okay. horizontal fan has many advantages here. Although I guess these pre these probably predate the pact. Maybe before the pact, it was you had like the cranery, the mechanisms to float someone over a top and they can reach down into it. E- either way, either way, this should be this should be like covered so that stuff doesn't fall in. You can you have it covered like a mushroom top, mm-hmm. but then air can come out the side. Perfect, and it should be clean. And it should be clean. <sighs> Barge into the nursery. Let's watch. Peter Nichols, do you know where your daughter is? You wake Do me. you know where your daughter is? No. Please leave. I think you better do as he says. If you wake the baby, this poor woman might just kill you. There's so many problems with this. My God! So this nursery is the future of the silo, the children, and the the raider team disrespects children so much as barge in. This guy's shouting, yelling, yelling. Like yo, like, all you gotta do is knock, knock, knock. Doctor Nichols, can you come talk to me outside? Yeah, easy. And then you just have a nice, quiet conversation. There's no need to do this. Why? Yeah. And then Sims comes in and undercuts his own man. Yeah, weird. So Sims is like, raider, you fucked up. Now I'm going to call you out in front of all these people just to undermine your leadership and your position. Because I'm Sims, and I don't know how to lead. I don't this, know how to do it. This head raider guy, he's going on like, man, fuck that guy. <laughs> he's having a very angry dinner. And I, like, my boss, my, my, my boss yeah. is a dick. Don't like it. And this kid right here is like, do I want to be a raider? Look, look at that fear in his face. Like, uh, <laughs> the bosses are fighting. The boss. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be a chill job that I like pretty much never get called into. Mm-hmm. Whew. Sims. Out of control. Me. Yeah, he's out of control. He's so out of control that he lies. Let's watch him lie. Would you help the people hunting your child? I would. Because no one person is more important than the 10,000 or the thousands to come. So Sims here says that if the silo forces raiders, whoever, were hunting his own child, then Sims would support the silo bureaucracy in hunting his child. Which is false, because in this episode... He diverts two raiders, you know, very important human resources to defend his family home. That's right. So he doesn't protect the silo over his family. It's just a total lie. His well, family gets special privileges. Yep. So he's just lying through his teeth. Liar. Would you mm-hmm. help the people hunting mm-hmm. your child? I would. Because no one person is more important than the 10,000 or the thousands to come. Except I mean, for me. Except for me. Me and Sims. my kid. My wife. Yep. In fact, his wife gets angry about it. That's right. Well, his wife was a raider. And she's like, I can take care of myself. Right. But Sims is like, no, you can't. I guess she, she doesn't get angry that he did it. She gets angry about what the raiders said. Let's watch. Let's watch. You mind if we check inside? You're not setting foot inside my home. I can take care of myself. Yes, ma'am. But we'd really I feel better. I feel a lot of attention running up yelling my name. You think my husband would like that? So uh, the problem I had with this was <laughs> she's like, don't say my name in front of everybody. You mean everybody that's been living here for 50 years? That's right. It's her, like, they're already in her tiny little pocket of her floor, of her, like, corner of her cul-de-sac, whatever we call it, right? And so, like, all the neighbors, they see her and Sims living there. Like, it's like, it's not like the neighbors that just moved in. Like, they've been living in this this part of the silo for, like, 20 years. Like, your neighbors know you by now. Yeah, they're going to know. So if you, if the raiders run up and say, hey, Sims' wife. Like, They're gonna right. be like, oh, that's where they live. No big deal. Let's go back inside. What's the problem? I guess the I guess there would be a problem if <laughs> I guess there would be a problem if she's actually a side piece. Because she's like they're, they're not supposed to know that she's with Sims. 
Sims has got like multiple families, Ooh. all separated by like twenty levels. <laughs> she's like, I. She doesn't think she's a side piece, but she suspects. So she's that's like, right. don't say my name. Ah, and that's why Sims is like, don't use, don't let people use the name Sims because like <laughs> if they do, people are like, wait, there's a Sims on this floor and this floor and this floor. Yeah, don't say my name because I'm a side piece. But Sims, I need the you. sweet, sweet judicial resources. Sims, you a liar. We caught you. Mm-hmm. Also, why is she getting upset about these raiders here? I mean, That's they're right. just following orders. They're like, oh, this person's tr- like annoying. I have to do this. But she's saying no. And if she walks into an in- unsecure apartment, I'm going to get in trouble if, they, if she gets hurt. And it's <sighs> not like they're, they're just doing their jobs and slowing her down. Like, they're just taking her home. <laughs> she's almost there. Like, just... Yeah. And, and they're following the orders of Sims, the husband. That's right. So... They're put in this terrible situation. Like, there's no win here. If they don't go into the apartment, Sims is upset that they didn't follow orders. If they do go into an apartment, the wife gets upset and tells Sims, and now they're in trouble again. There's no win. No win. Like, hey, I just signed up to yell at babies. Why am I, what am I doing <laughs> That's here? Right. That's right. <laughs> Fresh robber. So inside Juliet's apartment, Paul Billings is rummaging through, trying to figure out, find some clues, and he goes into her bathroom and finds Robert. Let's watch. Okay. Good place to check. Looking for the stash. Mm, look how fresh and healthy that rubber is. That's not like a 150-year-old crackly, even heck, even 25-year-old rubbery, dried-out rubber. This rubber is fresh. Which makes me think, how are they making rubber in the silo? Maybe they're growing trees? Yes. So rubber comes from trees. In fact, my grandfather, my grandfather had a rubber farm back in Malaysia. And so I looked it up. We looked it up and we, we found that it's between 60 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, moderately warm, kind of cool, somewhere in there. You know, very comfortable. Um, but also critically, a bit humid. So um, is the silo uniform temperature? If, if it's like uh, 150 floors, something like this, I would guess that there would be some, some what is it called, stratification of climate, climatological stratification, so different climates as a function of height. And so I would think so. That would naturally have different temperatures as a function of height. They could potentially equalize it by just running machines like air conditioners, humidifiers, just running them all the time. Um, however, if the silo creators were clever, they would say at this height, we expect to have this temperature, pressure, and, and humidity. At some other height, we expect some other temperature, pressure, and humidity. And so at height A versus height B, we grow apples versus rubber trees. I wonder. I wonder if they did this. So I, I think if the found the people who built the silo originally are probably pretty smart using modern technology. So I would imagine they could do computer modeling and place Ooh. the farms in the proper location so they don't tax the energy of the generator down in the down deep too much because mm. you want to want to lighten the load on that thing to so maintenance schedules are prolonged and you know replacement parts aren't as aren't needed as often mm. um now whether the silo after the pact is still following those protocols hope, hope maybe hopefully maybe. so maybe this rubber has some implications about how silo farming is done mm. do we will we learn this no way. No way. But important, because otherwise you yeah. can't have rubber after 120 some years. Right, because rubber, I guess, if it grows in Malaysia, it's more of like a tropical tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they like this, like, oh, yeah. I mean, you guess right here. Yeah, they yeah. like this weather that's not too cold, not too hot. There's some moisture, mm-hmm. some humidity. Average to high humidity is best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder, maybe humidity is even more important, because that might be even harder to control, because you need this, like, evaporation stuff to control the humidity whereas temperature might be easier so there's a lot of like dialed in plant yeah. processes that i don't know I'm, I'm a physicist i don't know plant stuff but but i do know that it has to be dialed in otherwise otherwise my plant <laughs> which i try to grow super died but, but yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> silo people must know what's going on i, I just yeah. like to know, learn about it yeah and there's this complex ecology give and take of the different levels and the plants and the people breathing and all this stuff that could easily just fall out of balance and everybody dies super critical so just this fresh rubber speaks a lot about the silo yeah very clever billings i would not have checked her yeah i mean super fresh look how 
Nice and plastic that is. Woo. And he finds a little package of lambda spread. Heck yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Air quality monitor. Let's look. Nichols then broke her mirror, destroying the air quality monitor behind it, a criminal offense. So from the last episode, Nichols wanted to reveal to Star Guy, his name is Kyle. I think so. And so she breaks the mirror and shows this device to him. At, but now Bernard is using the cover story that the device wasn't a camera, it was an air quality monitor. But how much, how could that make sense? Like, <laughs> it's an air quality monitor sealed behind a mirror? That's right. What? You know where I keep my smoke detectors? Buried underground outside. That's right. <laughs> the, sm the smoke will get there, but well, the house right. will be burned down. Outside down. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's like carbon monoxide or CO2 problems inside this apartment, it'll eventually diffuse behind the mirror and set off the... The, uh, the sensor. The sensor. But you're going to be dead. You're going to be affected. Like, what the heck? So Why would wild. they put it there? It's so wild that he's like an air quality sensor. And then why would you hide... An air quality sensor. It's like, oh, that's helping me. Yeah, just why put, hide just, it behind just put the it, Just put it in the room. <laughs> yeah. And then you come, what's that thing? Oh, it's an air quality sensor just to make sure that CO2 and the balance of everything in here mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. And the people living there would be like, yes, I'm glad okay. I have that. People would be like, yes, I'm glad I have that. Even though there's like a red light that blinks at night. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, all right, this is more reasonable mm -hmm. there than behind a mirror. Yeah. And like two, a husband and wife get freaky and it's like following them around the room. You're like, wait a second. Freaky activate. <laughs> okay. Just, they need to come up with a better cover story for the camera. Bernard, are you smart? <laughs> mm. 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 So what is this? Juliet is in Sims's apartment with the hard drive. She gets... Uh, Sims's wife and child as hostage, then plugs in the hard drive to view what's on it. Turns out that the janitor's closet has the capability of, as soon as the hard drive is plugged in, they know where the hard drive is. So it's like a remote locator. Let's watch. I need a system-wide scan for a hard drive. Serial number 18. Sir, serial numbers have nine digits. This has two. A one followed by an eight, otherwise known as 18. Find it! Okay. I need a... Okay. First off, Fucking Bernard. Like, so mean. This guy is on your team. He is working the fucking problem. And you coming in with this fucking attitude? I, this guy would sabotage. He keeps getting yelled at and shh by That's right. Sims. That's right. I mean, the Bernard little thing. If I was this guy, I would blast like video of Sims in his, not Sims, of Bernard in his apartment. Like, That's right. Oh, your privacy is gone. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah, it looks like you got a small D there, Bernard. Oh. And then and then everybody else is watching this disrespect and thinking, why am I here? That's why right. do I care? They, I mean, they don't even turn around because they know that they're next. They're next. Just, yeah. just focus in. It's like, up. it's like second, third, and fourth on command in the uh, Galactic Empire. It's like nobody wants to be promoted because <laughs> <No, yeah, yeah. laughs> they're going to die by choke. Yeah. Here, if you're in command of the, the monitoring room, you're going to get yelled at by either Sims or Bernard. Also, if if my my serial number tracking wants nine characters, I can't give it two characters. It'll just say, what do you want me to do with this? Like, like do you, and, and, it's, and this is actually an actual issue. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Because do you want me to do zeros, then one eight? Do you want me to do underscores, then one eight? Do you want one eight, then F, 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 F? Like, it actually matters. Yeah. It's a very legitimate point. No, one F. One, one, one eight, otherwise known as 18. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know 18. I, I, like, know, I, I know. You told me the fucking number. I know what it is. I'm telling you, I need nine in the slot. That's right. And you're coming in here yelling at me, but I still need nine numbers. Right. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> Back to the tech. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So they have this tech. As soon as a hard drive is plugged in, they can find out where it is um, in the silo. This has consequences. So like all of the computer terminals throughout the silo can be remotely located and monitored. So like the big brotherness of this uh, is way more extensive than I thought. Indeed. So that means that pretty much all things are tracked in the silo. Is that right? Sounds like it's tracked as long as you don't have a, as long as it's plugged in, it's notified where it is. Except I guess the IT guy, the IT guy that we that with is created this episode, that he can like like fake That's locations. Right. He can yeah, That's he right. can spoof locations. The, the redhead. The redhead, yeah. He's coming up. So really he should also have a little script that says like 
94th floor, 82nd floor, 12th floor. Just just keep spoofing locations. That's right, yeah. So not only is this remote location technology available, it's also not that secret. You mix it in with a speaker and you get Bernard thinking there are ghosts. Like the hard drive's jumping around and spooky sounds. <laughs> Mess with his head, yeah. Gaslight. <laughs> Gaslight, yeah. Bring in the supernatural. Let's do it. That's right. There's demons in his office that he can't see. <laughs> All of a sudden he's... He's going crazy? Sure. Yeah. I mean, with, with the knowledge that's in this room, like you can monitor him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, like absolutely, yeah. Season two, baby. That's the plot. <laughs> I'm calling it. Yeah, so at first I thought this judicial remote location technology was a pretty well-held secret within the janitor's closet. Turns out there's random redheads running around knowing about it. There's a file I need to finish looking at. Why'd you need me for that? Needs a computer with sysop clearance, and I'm betting they wouldn't give one to a criminal, so... Not easy, but I can get around it. And they're looking for that drive, so as soon as you plug it in, they'll come running. That's a little harder, but doable. I can make them think it's coming from somewhere else in the silo. Anywhere you want to send a team of writers? <sighs> so where does this guy learn how to do this? I guess he works in IT and has a side hustle of criminal activity? Like, what the fuck? Maybe he has a hard drive of Khan Academy stuff, and so he learned, <laughs> he learned how to do it. That's right, Khan Academy teaching hackers in the future siloed how to... Remote locate hard drives. Be like, mm, it's over there. Yeah. So he's not different. just doing his job in IT, you know, clock in, clock out. He's actually got real enthusiasm for IT. True. Doing his job, learning, real, learning a lot, going out in the real world, doing some... You know, entrepreneurial stuff. Oh yeah, maybe maybe he takes his IT knowledge and then he like has a side business at home. I don't know if they're allowed to do that in Silo, but maybe he has a side business at home where he's like doing official repairs and then also like underground backroom black ops stuff. I mean, maybe because we kind of saw Wilkins had like a workshop. Maybe That's this right. guy has a workshop. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's obviously got custom parts going on here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of cool. At the same time. Like, we have the janitor's closet with secret cameras everywhere. How are they not going to know about this guy? That's right. I mean, he stands out because he's a fucking redhead. <laughs> <laughs> but also, like, he's doing criminal stuff. How they, like, can they monitor this, the silo regularly and keep track of criminal activities I mean, or not? Heck, so so in the past, they've the silo has described it as... Uh, having people that do criminal things but it was always like a one-off person like mm -hmm. assault or a theft this guy is suggesting that there's an entire criminal ring yeah, right like the, these two people i, I don't know they're, they're connected and they like do offers <laughs> and trades of different like services for each other um yeah so yeah. silo's really slipping on security and then so the cameras are secret That's right so these this criminal enterprise doesn't know about the cameras so how could this many person criminal enterprise without knowledge of the cameras stay right. secret they're gonna they're gonna slip up because they won't know they're being watched that's right so how does that work sims is not doing his job yeah he's just yelling at people all he's day yelling long. at people keeping the silos <laughs> safe for everyone but actually there's an entire underground criminal network right it's just under his nose he doesn't care yeah he's just yep. yelling at his own people <laughs> So at the end of, of um, Billings inside Julie's apartment, he finds the book and he burns it. But what is going on? He seems to be, he's crying from the imagery. I think he's not necessarily stable. Let's watch. Georgia is beautiful. Check it out sometime. Georgia. Mm, and peaches. He rips out a page. A page. I'm not sure which page, but he rips it out. Mm -hmm. not, not a careful rip. No. And he puts it in the oven. Keeps one for himself. I hope it was like the coupon page. He's like, I, I need these. <laughs> Alarm goes off. Alarm goes off. And here in the janitor's closet. Got it. It's on 98. She was on 17. How the fuck did she get to 98? They're talking about the hard drive. They don't even notice. They don't notice at all what Billings is doing. Which is weird. Which is weird because there should be a camera pointing right in that kitchen. No, but isn't it? Wasn't the camera behind the, um, the mirror and they took it away? You're saying there's a second camera? 
Oh, did they fix it? But I was thinking maybe even if there's not a camera, shouldn't the fire alarm be routed here? Even if they're not going to respond to it, there's like a fire department that will respond to it. Right. They would get a, a blinking red light just to get notified of the situation. Just to know what's awareness. going on. Yeah. Okay. They're just like, if it's not on the camera, I didn't see it. I didn't Whatever. see it. Whatever. Also, is Billings stable? Like, why do this? What's this the... is a risky move because, like, burning a book inside an oven, like, you're going to have to activate the fire alarm. People, like, whoever takes care of the fire, the fire, the firemen in the silo, they're going to come here and be like, "What is going on?" Yeah. So he's drawing actually a lot of attention to himself, but but maybe that's what he wants. Maybe he wants to draw attention to this apartment, and he's going to bail and do something else. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how what his state of mind is. I mean, that has to be the only conclusion, right? Because if you wanted to hide the book without drawing attention, there are many ways you could do that. In fact, you had a great idea about how to dispose of the book without drawing attention. So he should shove it in the back of his pants, pull his jacket down. That way it's not like bulging. People don't see it. And then he goes to his apartment. He boils a pot of water, puts the book in there. And so like the water plus the heat makes breaks down the fibers of the book. And so now it's like mushed up. If he were to take it and like rip it apart or cut it up, put it in different trash bins, those pieces could get put together. However, if he makes a slurry of this mished, mashed up book, then people cannot put it together. This, this book is destroyed. No smoke, no fire, no alarms, no one notices. It's just gone quietly. But his move, instead of something clever like that, is to just... Burn it, which he knows he's living in the silo. Fires are important. It's going to set off the smoke detector. The fire department is going to come. People are going to mill about, be like, what's all the smoke? I mean, he's packed, man. He should know. He yeah. knows exactly how they reply. That's right. So what is he doing? He's trying to draw attention to the apartment. He's trying to draw attention to his actions. Right. I believe so, him. I think it's a strategic thing. I think it might be a strategic thing. Let's so see what he does. Could be a misdirection where he gets the attention over here and he goes and does something over here. Oh. Nobody's looking. Very clever. Oh. Or he's fucking lost it. And we got another emotional wreck in this show. <laughs> the, the imagery of animals outside. It's like, oh, no, no, burn it. No, there's monsters outside. This, uh, this obstructs my faith. The pact. The pact. <laughs> yeah, then we transition. We transition to the Sim household. And I am worried about, about this kid. Let's watch. This kid is dark. Hi, cute. I'm gonna send that lady out to clean. We hope oh. you do. Oh! <laughs> I don't want her to ever come back. Look, 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 okay, look at Sim's <laughs> reaction. He's looking at his wife and he's like, what the shit? What, is, this what are we kid? raising? <laughs> this kid's like, kill him. Kill, kill him, him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Can I get what? a knife, Dad? Okay, so okay? this is my head cannon. My head cannon is that the son, the son is actually in charge of the silo. He's actually a janitor. And so, like, because he's like, Dad. I don't want Holston to ever be on this earth. <laughs> like, send Holston outside. Like anyone that the son doesn't like, he's like, Dad, send him outside. Make them walk. Make and them clean. Sims and his wife are so scared of their son. They're just like, I'll do whatever you say. Don't stab me in my sleep. <laughs> he's like, I'll do whatever you say. Don't send me to clean. <laughs> like, Dad, send yourself to clean. I don't want to see you ever. Oh, my gosh. He's like, I hope the outside is livable. I hope it's livable. My son would kill me if I stayed. But let's look, like, go back a little bit, like like two seconds, three seconds, like emotionless. Right. This this kid, super calm, super cool. No, there's no like fear in his face at all. He just wants, he, he wants, wants people dead. He wants people to die. <laughs> He's scary. Oh my gosh. He's scary. Terrifying. Oh so the display is a lie and now Juliet criminal guy and redhead now know that the display is a lie. Let's watch. It's so beautiful. Can anyone hear me? It's beautiful. The display in the cafeteria. People have to know. They have to see. Oh, so it's right. The display is a lie. <gasps> so... <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so shocked. It's it's green outside. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We were actually thinking about this. It doesn't necessarily mean that the outside is livable. It could be green, right. but it could actually be a toxic environment because life can survive in places that humans can't thrive. Oh yeah. So, if, if, for like a modern day example, mm -hmm. like drop a person down in the Amazon, like 
They're gonna have a rough time. Like, yes, it's full and lush and green. There's lots of animals. There's lots of greenery. Lots Sorry. of things to eat. But there's also lots of things that a want to eat you, like jaguars, <laughs> or b you just want to just fuck you up with poison, like snakes and spiders and stuff. Yeah. Like, so just because it's green and lush right. does not necessarily mean it's suited for humans. This is actually worse because we don't know what happened in the past in the history that mm-hmm. caused everyone to go underground. It could have been like a nuclear fallout, chemical fallout, something, something like this. Could be atmospheric composition. So there's too much CO2 or carbon monoxide or something weird in the atmosphere. That has actually happened in the history of, of the Earth that like wiped out like three quarters of life right. and stuff. And so the fact that we have birds here and and vegetation and, and the trees um, does not necessarily mean that it's a, an environment that's suitable for humans. In fact, that the, the, the trees, the plants, the birds that survived here are could be a selection bias. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. of all the however many hundreds of thousands of trees and birds, the ones everything else died, and these are the ones that were able to be flexible mm-hmm. enough to adapt to the environment once whatever happened above ground happened. Yeah. So for example, if it's like a CO too much CO two in the atmosphere that's toxic to humans, we would all die. But there are some birds and a lot of plants can actually survive in quite high CO two environments. So it could be quite lush but just not for us. And so then IT makes it look desolate for protecting people. Actually, it might be the right move to keep people inside. That's right. Especially since we've, like, we being humans in the silo, have been stuck on the ground, not co-evolving with the environment. Uh, we are, we right. effectively force ourselves to have to live inside the tube. That's right. So is that going to happen? I don't know. I don't but know. just because it's green doesn't mean it's nice. That's right. It might be, though. But it might be. Not necessarily. Which also, as a reminder, this is, they were watching the Jane Carmody cleaning file. Look at all the other files. I want to know more. I want to know more. Yeah, stairwell repairs? Heck yeah. Inventory? Hello. Heck yeah. You can figure out where that tape is going. That's right. Glass, another cleaning file? Glass house cleaning? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Surge prey? Surge prey? Hello. What is a surge prey? Surge, so like a, sw- like a swell and then prey as in like hunting? I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. So much to learn. And last thing, let's watch Wilkins' video. So it was in a bunch of different locations in the episode. We cut it together. Let's watch. <laughs> it's <like> loud. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. That was really loud for us. Hold on a second. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, Jules. Pretty crazy, right? This crazy. is a video. Well, at least that's what they called it in the before times. Uh, I'm, I'm making it on an old camera that I found. I mean, that's what they called it in the before times. I got it working because I'm a genius. Hopefully you're watching this and I'm right next to you watching your reaction. But if not, and you're watching without me, uh, well, first off, that means you found all the clues I left behind. But if you're watching it alone, that also means that Judicial found out that I have the hard drive. And so we talked about this. Why leave clues around? Why not just tell her? That's right. So, I mean, no kink shaming, maybe, <laughs> maybe this is their thing, but otherwise, like, it's weird that he wouldn't just tell her. I mean, I mean, okay, so there's, there's a window where he doesn't trust her, so he's, like, writing this out because mm-hmm. he's not sure if he should tell her yet. But at the same time, if he's not sure if he should tell her because he doesn't trust her, then don't make clues that she might solve. Because <laughs> what if he's, like, what if he, like, didn't die? And if he's, like, you know what, I changed my mind, I don't want to tell Juliet, but then these clues exist. She could solve it on her own. And then also, like, if she wants to tell her the full story but doesn't trust her just yet, you could put a very clear stash in. So they have a location that they, the only two of them know about, down in the, the water area with in the, the drill. The drill room. The drill, the drill room yeah. with their, like, the bed that like, only yeah. them know about. The only they know about. So you could put the stash there, and when he starts to trust her, you'd be like, hey, go look at that stash. Everything will I'll clear everything up. Why sprinkle clues around the silo that she may or may not I mean, see? Gosh, if it's a if it's a super critical message and she doesn't solve the puzzle, then that information is gone. It's like, gone. What if he, what if he's an Einstein? Like what if he's like a once in a mm-hmm. ten generation brain, and now he's like I figured out this secret, mm-hmm. but he's like I'm going to leave clues that nobody can solve, and then for the next ten generations, everyone has to live in the silo. Like, just tell yeah. her. Just tell just, her. Just yeah. So I I'm not seeing the reason why. He's leaving clues instead of just leaving a stash of clearly written letters and videos yeah. or whatever. Yeah. What a quirky dude. So quirky. Let's continue. Things haven't gone the way I wanted. Please.
please know that I never meant to put you in any danger. But Jules, there is stuff on this drive that people need to see. The truth. Also, the truth about allocations. And, That's right. <laughs> and surge pray. <laughs> people need to know. <laughs> They're charging us surge pricing. <laughs> people need to know. I mean, actually, would the video piss people off more? Or like, Bernard is taking all the good shit. That's right. That's going to piss people off more than some green video. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, what the heck? I'm being honest. You should also know that I transferred to Mechanical so that I could find someone to use as a guide down here. And it didn't take long for me to realize that the know-it-all down here is you. My plan was to get all the knowledge you could provide and then leave you behind. But then the most annoying thing happened. I fell in love with you. <sighs> anyway, I wanted to tell you today at Cooper's Shadow Party that uh, I found the door I've been looking for. It's huge, uh, maybe 15 feet high. Is this the door down in the water? I'm thinking maybe he's talking about the tunnel. The tunnel. So when I'm thinking of the tunnel, it's a tunnel from like episode two. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. at the bottom of the silo that like went off somewhere. Right. And I've been thinking that we've never seen that tunnel because right. we've never left the column of the silo. I think so. Um, is that what he's talking about? I guess so. I think so. I guess we'll find out next episode. Yeah, maybe. At all. I can't get through it. Maybe you can. I'm guessing you're wondering what I did about the water. Well, turns out it was nothing to worry about anyway. He's like, I found the plug. Boink. And then. Hmm. Why would the water not be a problem? Was it not the door wasn't in the water? Oh, are you saying that the, you're saying that the door is underneath the water in the Zuru room? And you I mean, figured out a way to get rid of the water? Well, if something was under the water and the water's a problem because it's the thing we want is in the water, either the door or something else. Mm -hmm. The water not being a problem means the water is no longer there. Or the thing we wanted, we were mistaken and it's actually above the water. Oh, okay. But what does it mean the water is no longer a problem? That's right. He's like, he's like... In his mind, he has a scenario that he's like, this is a problem. And he's like, oh, but don't worry about it. It's not a problem. And Juliet's like, what? 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 what is the scenario we're talking about? Yeah. What What do you mean the water's not a problem? Okay. I guess I'll <laughs> remember that. Yeah. <laughs> out of context. He said the water's not a problem. 100% out yeah. of context. Yeah. Is there scuba gear around here? What? What's going on? Mm. You know what scuba gear needs? Fresh rubber. That's, that's true. Jules, the important thing is the door is down there. You have to find it. I gotta go hide this drive and then head back up. One more thing before I go. I'm so happy that I got to be the lucky bastard in this fucked up place who got to be with you. So in case I wasn't clear enough earlier, I love you, Juliet Nichols. I love you. Okay. So still you haven't have seen the door. Still haven't seen the what, what's under the water. Still don't know what's going on. Why won't he tell her where the door is? He's like, you have to find it. Yeah. Look at the drill, that fact, drill, and then go 30 <laughs> degrees and look down 20 degrees, and it's right there. She's fact, like, why didn't you tell her in this video? She's that's right. like, by the way, I'm sitting here. Pick up the camera. She's like, there it is. There, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, she's going to go down there. Water's not a problem. Solve a puzzle. But the tunnel's here. But the water's not a problem. George like puzzles. So the door is under the water, but the water's not a problem. Or it's, it, it, like, what? George. George, just tell me. We already have a secret communication. That's right. Just tell me. Okay, George. Conclusions. So, that's the end of this episode. What's going to happen next time? Uh, Juliet and her ragtag team is outplaying Bernard and Sims. Incredible. Right? Bernard and Sims are the gender's closet. They uh, make sure they they uh, they survey everyone. They survey survey they watch surveil, everyone. Surveil. They, watch everyone. Surveil. they watch everyone to make sure things are going smoothly for the protection and the safety of everyone and all the future people. But here is like Juliet and random people that she met like a week ago are just outplaying them left and right. She goes to Sims apartments bails before before the raiders can get there she goes down to wherever this place is they acquire a new person that knows how to circumvent bernard's tracking system and and they just just firing off full all cylinders just beating bernard and sims even though their like full-time job is to monitor people and and I remember the beginning of the episode she jumped off the railing landed on the the walkway ran into a neighborhood and then dis disappeared <laughs> Poof. okay she's just outwitting everybody
So, given her her amazing abilities, what's going to happen to her in the finale? I mean, is she going to find what she needs to find? Is she going to get sent outside to clean? I don't know. And also, Billings. Billings is a wild card for me, he so I, yeah. I have a hard time reading him. Who will he side with? Will he side with Sims or Juliet? Yeah, because he is loyal to the pact, but he's, his faith is being broken. That's right. So, unclear. We'll see you next time. Salo Season 1, Episode 10.